one. As someone who has worked in the hotel and restaurant industries, I have many stories to tell. The first takes place at the current restaurant where I work. Some woman in her early 60s arrived with a group of four people. Two couples. One of them had a nicer looking woman about the same age, and two men. One of whom resembled a Kevin, and the other who had a look of remorse on his face. I put them in the back corner since I could see by her resting bitch face that this would be a difficult table and didn't want other customers to be annoyed. I brought a jug of water as instructed, and Kevin goes on to proclaim, I didn't ask for water. Why are we getting water? He asks angrily. Sorry about that, sir. We provide water to every table. I said in my best customer voice, if that's what you're concerned about, it's free. Keep this in mind for a moment later. My manager came over to check on me to see whether I was okay. I smiled at him, indicating that I was fine for the time being. I left the water on the table for a second to take another's orders. When I was about to take the orders for the table with Kevin and Karen, Karen exclaimed, What took you so long? I'm very sorry, I'm the only server on and have other tables to serve, I said again in my customer voice. When I requested for beverages, Kevin replied, No, we have water already. This perplexed me, but I followed with the flow in order to receive a gratuity at the end. Because I live in Ireland, tipping is optional and only provided for excellent service. I went to take the meal order because all four of them only ordered main courses. I won't go into detail about what everyone orders because it's not crucial for the story, and I don't recall what everyone ordered except Karen. She requested the duck. I noticed the table after taking the orders into the kitchen, Karen looking at me and what appeared to be moaning about me. Just to get to the next section, I should mention that the restaurant just changed hands, and the cuisine has always been excellent. This is after the change in ownership. I hear the bell indicating that the dinner is ready. I transport two dishes while my manager transports the other two. Karen is once again underwhelmed. I put the meal down, ask if they need anything else, and return to my section, where I stay if there is nothing else to do on the floor. After about 15 minutes, Karen beckons me over and says in her Karen tone, There's a problem with my duck. I'll get my manager to take care of you, I offer. I go get my manager and he walks right over to the table, unsurprised that he needed to. Looking at the empty platter, he asks Karen, What's the deal with the duck? I didn't like it, so I should get it for free, Karen declares. If she didn't like it, she would have told us sooner and wouldn't have finished it, so it seemed suspicious. In response, my manager tells Karen, Well then, you can duck off. The pleasant couple appear to be about to chuckle. I'm sorry, can we just get the bill? said the polite woman. The table pays and departs. The nice lady hands me 20 euros and says, Once again, we're so sorry. That's similar to the last I heard about Kevin and Karen. The pleasant pair has become regulars. 2. I've never made anyone fear for their life before, because I'm a patient, shy, introverted person, and very nice to everyone I'm around. Unless they step their boundaries, then I'll just use my words to tell them to back off instead of jumping straight into violence. The most I've done is raise my voice to get someone's attention, which resulted in me becoming exhausted for a while. But got everyone's attention, and I apologized afterwards for raising my voice. Now for the story. I've been working a stressful eight-hour shift at Home Depot. I had opened that day and was moved around every hour because I was asked to cover for several cashiers so they could go on break. Then, when a different cashier, Karen, comes over to me and asks... Hey, Dragon Crystal, can you stay in close because we don't have enough cashiers to work the closing shaft? Now, this cashier has been known to make other cashiers handle things she was supposed to do, and even disappear for minutes on end. Backing up other people's break time or hiding in the break room, faking, to lose track of time. The worst was when she was picking up another cashier's shift and didn't show up, causing our supervisor to call the other cashier to work her shift. This, Karen also seemed to want me to cover all of her shifts. Even if I'd reached my limit, which is 40 hours for the week. 
Sorry, but I've been here since opening and reached my hourly limit. I won't be allowed to work any extra hours this week. Also, I have homework to handle for college as soon as I get home. But Sally, our supervisor, needs someone to stay until closing. You don't want to disappoint her, do you? No, I don't want to, but I've already told you I've reached my hourly limit, so I won't be allowed to work extra hours. Maybe someone else can pick up the extra hours. Ugh, fine. Sally will be so disappointed that nobody is willing to stay for a few extra hours. Don't blame me if you could call to speak with her later. I raise my tone slightly. I'm a part-time worker and already told you that I've reached my hourly limit. So don't be putting words in my mouth like your mom and trying to guilt trip me into working extra hours when I know I won't be allowed to pick up those extra hours. Karen just rolled her eyes and walked away mumbling something under her breath. About five or ten minutes later, Sally walks out and stares at me for a bit. Confused, I ask if something was wrong. I'm fine, but did you say something to Karen? I only told her that I couldn't stay until closing and that I reached my hourly limit. Why? Well, Karen came back and said that you'd screamed at her and were throwing things around before threatening to fight her if she didn't leave you alone. But it doesn't look like she's being truthful. Uh, yeah, unless I'm Supergirl, the only thing that's within reach is that forklift over there. But I'm still not staying until closing. Sally laughed at my joke and told me that she had already found someone who was staying until closing, and she'll speak to Karen about her fib. Karen didn't speak to me after that incident, and disappeared not too long afterwards. I didn't ask about what happened to Karen, unless I wanted to lose my job because it's stated in our contract not to ask why so-and-so was fired or laid off from work. But again, I'm not into spreading rumors and just stay out of other people's business. I was told by Sally herself that if we stayed after our shifts, we weren't getting paid overtime. So why stay later if I wasn't getting paid for working it? 3. Once upon a time in the fabled land of New York City, when I was ten or so years of age, my father and I stood at the counter of a small cafe in Macy's. My father was placing the order. Coffee, I'm sure. Black for him, and a sweetened one for my mother. And I was leaning with folded arms on the counter's edge, with one foot bouncing by the toe on the floor behind me, a product of my Tourette syndrome. And it should be noted that the store was empty around us, with no other people in line, or even within a stone's throw of the cafe. Now, while I stood in calm idleness amid the bright glow of the skylights and lightly colored merchandise displays, several things happened. First, there was the feeling of someone tripping over my bouncing foot, followed by a surprised and angered, Hey! Finally, I felt a weak impact of clenched knuckles between my shoulder blades. Unhurt but startled, I turned and saw a woman, perhaps in her late fifties, thin almost to the point of frailty, glaring at me with an anger that quelled my goody two-shoes heart. I was an oddly well-behaved child growing up, beloved of my teachers, prone to putting myself into time out for crimes unwitnessed, and woefully untoughened in the face of the dark things of life. And so, while today I can see in the eye of memory that this woman's anger had all the limp potency of an overcooked stock of asparagus, at the time I was still and afraid. The woman spoke, frantic and shrill. You can't just do that. You can't just stick your leg out like... Like a shot, my father's arm was out and had caught her by the upper arm. All in a flash, her face lost all its anger, along with all the color bequeathed to it by the last vestiges of middle age. Then my father spoke, and he spoke with the voice that all good men know, and which they sometimes pick up like a sword, when there is warning to do and wrongs to right. That so stern voice in which can be heard the distant echoes of the fulgurous tones that assailed Moses atop the high crest of Sinai. My son, he began, has to rats. I remember nothing more of what he said, but even now I can hear the terrible, nearly song-like cadence of those first four words, like the opening notes of a funeral dirge. 
He spoke for her but a moment, and when he released the woman, she fled silently and swiftly away. The whole affair was perhaps twenty seconds, and though I cried in my mother's arms in the aftermath, I would not undo the experience now even if I could. For those few painful seconds and years of reflection since have taught me two true things. That there are villains in the world, yes, but there are heroes too. Four. I work as a barista at a very popular coffee franchise, and my store is the busiest in the district. Yay. So we do get fairly backed up sometimes, especially since our manager has been consistently understaffing us and cutting hours. So quite often, especially recently, we've been taking longer to get things done, especially when we're busy. Yesterday we were severely understaffed, so we had to close the cafe and do drive through only. It was me, the shift supervisor John, and the other barista Mike. There was a decently long line in the drive through and I was doubling his drive through order, taking orders and window, taking payment, and handing out drinks. Mike was working double bar, mobile orders and drive through bar, while John was working warming and whatever else needed to be done. Context over, now for the story. I take someone's order and they pull forward. However, there were a few cars ahead of them, so the lady behind them couldn't fully pull in front of the speaker. The speaker has a sensor, so it will detect if a car has pulled up. And once the car has pulled up, the audio turns on. So, this lady was pulled up enough that the audio was on, but not far enough forward to hear her well enough to take her order. I don't think anything of it until she honks her horn. The speaker can suck, and people sometimes mumble and whisper orders, so I have my headset turned all the way up, so the honk... Deafening. I'm annoyed and share a look with John, who also had a headset, but otherwise ignored it. Then she honks again, so I turn on the headset. I was polite because customer service, even though I was fuming and said, Please don't honk. You're right in range of the speaker and it's hurting my ears. Karen yelled, The idiot in front of me isn't pulling forward. I tried to explain that there was a line and the person in front of her wasn't able to pull up. She ignored me, continuing to honk. <coughs> Finally, when the person in front of her pulled up, I was helping the guy at the window pay. Karen had fully pulled up to the box. I turned on my headset briefly to say I'd be with her in a moment, so I could finish ringing the man at the window up. Of course, Karen ignores me with a shout of, FINALLY! She starts snapping her order at me. I now lose my temper a bit and go back on the headset, my tone a little harsh, which I do take accountability for. I said I'll be with you in a moment, ma'am. She started huffing and puffing, but I ignored her. John, who was on one of his last few shifts before leaving, says, If she asks for a manager, I'm not here. Luckily for John, she didn't even wait for me to finish with the customer at the window before rage quitting and peeling out of the parking lot. Side note, the woman she was honking at thought it was hilarious and tipped five dollars for the trouble. Five. So yesterday I was on a day trip with my parents. I'm a university student and have holidays right now to the neighboring country. When we drove home already in our own country again, we decided to eat something at a restaurant, which is why we took another route and ended up between two small villages on the road, driving there. The street isn't that big, but it's possible for two cars to pass each other without damage. There aren't any marks or drawings on the road, though, to make clear where which side ends, so we drove there and suddenly out of nowhere, after a curve, there was a white van in the middle of the street. My dad, who drove, honked and evaded as good as possible, which ended up with our car at the curb. We stopped. The other car stopped a few meters after. My dad got out of the car and argued with the other driver that came out without a shirt, some middle-aged dude. I got out too, mostly out of curiosity, as well as the passenger princess of the other car. She must have been somewhat around 20 to 25, so quite my own age range, in case that's important for anyone. The driver was like, wasn't my fault. 
You could have driven straight ahead, and there's nothing on your car, we didn't even touch it. If my dad wouldn't have made his evasion maneuver, he would have crashed frontal into the other car. And that little princess not just backed him up, no. She constantly mocked us, like it's our own fault that our car is now damaged. We were at their side of the street, and not the other way around, that we were too dramatic, that we can't be serious, etc. So the police got involved, and while we waited, the fighting and bickering between both of us continued. She continually told her driver stuff like, Pfft, they're ever dramatic. We didn't even touch your car. Somebody really needs to be stupid to end up like that. But loud enough that we had to hear, constantly with that ugly, smugly entitled grin on her face. Of course, I got angry and told her that it's bold to speak like that after causing an accident like that. Well, the police arrived. Statements and photos of the damages were taken. Something dripped from underneath our car since the accident. And while one of the policemen was talking to my dad and me, the other one talked to them. And she was playing the harmless, nice girl act, telling the officer that we were at fault. That we were in the middle of the street, which is completely impossible, because if we had been there, we would never have hit the curb like we did, mocking us and gossiping about us to the officer. So I calls her off, and before I could end my statement, she shut me up with, No, the police is here. They take care of that. We don't talk. Like she wouldn't have bitched about us the whole damn time? If I had acted like her, I'd have said something like, You know, let's be honest. I can imagine quite well because your driver wasn't able to pay attention to the road, just slightly dressed next to a young girl. He obviously wants to impress. But I didn't want to fall to her level. After the policeman did their job, she was at the other side of our car, next to hers, once again telling her driver that nothing dramatic had happened and we overreacted. So I told her in a sarcastic tone, yeah, sure, that something unidentified is dripping from our car is totally harmless, right? She didn't answer. But the whole time she had her smug grin on her face. In the end, we parted ways, currently waiting for mail from the police station, now that case will end. But that girl just completely drove me nuts. I thought maybe some people here would at least be entertained by my anger and vent. Hello everybody, hey Freezer here. Nah, that's not right. Everyone... Freeze... Water to make ice. No, that's not right. Um, you ever dance with the devil on the snowy wonderland? No, that's not right. Uh, oh, hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Idiots in the Wild, episode 130. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, if you want to, you don't have to, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to get the videos a little bit early, then you can support me on my Patreon. And you can do that for a little bit of money, or a little bit of money, a month. You'll find the link to that in the description, along with the link to the Hellfreezer Teespring store, where you can get yourself all those cool t-shirts I designed. Well, most of which I designed. And you can also make donations during streams or videos, just like this one. And you don't have to, it's not required, the videos are always there for you. But uh, sometimes we YouTubers need help funding our extravagant lifestyles so that I can buy things like groceries and pay bills. Okay, no other business today, I don't think. So we're going to move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Voice actress, it's about voice actress. Uh, I'm inspired to ask this with the recent passing of Arlene Sorkin. I literally just saw it as I was recording this video on uh, well, late on Saturday, early Sunday morning, technically, I started work on this. Uh, the, the, the first Harley Quinn, the one who originated that character. And it's quite simple. Is Has there ever been uh, a production where a voice actor has changed and you have perhaps not noticed? And sometimes the change will be very obvious. So do you prefer it when it's seamless, when the replacement actor is able to replicate that voice nearly exactly? Like sticking with um, the, the, the people in the Batman universe. Troy Baker does an excellent rendition of Mark Hamill's Joker, for example. So 
if they wanted to, and I think Mark Hamill would be okay with it. I believe he's commented that he is okay with it. If Mark Hamill didn't want to play the Joker anymore, and I don't think he will after Kevin Conroy's passing, uh, Troy Baker could do that type of voice very easily, and it's very good. Uh, so personally speaking, I like it when they get sound alikes. Like, um, we won't get into the reasons for it. This this isn't the place to get into the reasons for it. But on Rick and Morty, they're having to replace a lot of the voice actors because it was one guy doing a lot of the voices. So Rick and Morty are being replaced, plus some of the incidentals. And I hope that whoever they hire to replace that individual... Um, is able to emulate those voices exactly because it was a, that person did another character on Solar Opposites and they, they went for a more fun approach with that and that they got someone who, as a plot point, sounds nothing like the original. I think it was Dan Stevens, actually, a very good actor. Uh, but personally speaking, I hope, though I prefer it when a replacement, if an actor has to be replaced, they sound like the original. But, but I'm led to believe that other people have other opinions than my own, so I'd like to see what you guys think in a comment below. And with that... I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.